Hey everybody, welcome to Diabetes Talk. Uh, my name is Laura, I'm here with Lorianne. Uh, we're so happy to be here. There's so much to talk about with this topic of nutrition. I'm usually behind the camera and I'm so excited to be in front of the camera this time. Um, I do get a lot of questions from you guys regarding nutrition. We were just talking about just how much there is to cover with this, and we're gonna try our best to get as much in as we can in 30 minutes for you guys. Um, I do hold a master's degree in nutrition, and I'm happy to be here along with Lori Ann, who I will let introduce herself. Hi everyone, I'm Lori Ann. Um, now you have met the three L's. If you were here earlier today, um, you got a great workout with Lauren, and you have Laura here and Lori Ann. So we are the three L's from FitScript. I have a degree in um, nutrition and exercise physiology, and I am also the diabetes educator for FitScript. So welcome everybody. And we are going to be talking tonight, we called it Eating Healthy with Diabetes um, 101. So let's start with the questions and concerns that we have heard from you already. And as usual, if while we're talking, if you have any questions, please send them our way and hopefully we will be able to get them into the topic and answer them for you. So first I do want to say hi to Jeanette. Um, it was great meeting you in Chicago and always see you on the backside. You are always with us. Um, Veronica in the app, name to face, you see what I look like. I'm always talking to you. Um, it's great to have you with us. And Janet, welcome. Um, it's great to have you all here. So please, like Lorian said, send in your questions and uh, what are we starting with, Lorian? So basically, we're just going to lay the groundwork and just remind everybody that diabetes is an inability for people to manage their blood sugars. So we need to keep in mind that anything that's going to turn into sugar in your blood, um, that we need to keep an eye on that. So we will be talking about carbs, but we are going to be starting with some other things besides carbohydrates. One of the first things that we're going to be talking about is the fact that there are many, many different approaches um, to eating by people who have diabetes. So we need to help you figure out what works best for you. At Glucosone, we don't actually recommend a one-size-fits-all approach. And we are going to be speaking to you to let you kind of figure it out for yourself and as usual, um, help you figure out what works best for you. And hello, Donnie Ray, it's so nice um, to see you. And, um, and please you know, share where you guys are from and um, again, questions. Yeah, <laughs> so um, we do get a lot of questions from you guys asking for what to eat and when, daily menus, all of these types of things which are very common in the fitness industry, very common in the healthcare world. Um, I do come from nutrition counseling background where I've kind of seen that, you know, like Lorian said, not one thing doesn't fit all. So we do stress finding what works for you. We are here to guide you and give you tips. We're here to inform you on what is might be a healthier option, might not be the most healthy option, and really kind of let you see how you feel with certain foods, um, and kind of, you know, go from there. So I know I think we want to start with the most important part of our day. So today um, we are going to start talking about something that's really important for everyone, but especially important, and that's water. So cheers. Cheers to water. Here's to water. <laughs> so if you're if you have water, take a sip while we take a sip as well. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry, I hope everybody <laughs> heard me drinking my water. <laughs> she really did drink it. I did drink water. <laughs> so it's really important for people to drink water and to stay hy hydrated, especially if you're exercising and also especially if you might be running with elevated blood sugars. And the question people always ask us is, how do you know how much water to drink? Yep. Sometimes people think that it's really important to drink eight, eight ounces of water a day. And for some people that might work really well, but what happens if you're taller than the average person? Or what happens if you're shorter than the average person? You might actually need more or you might need less. Mm -hmm. So to put it out there, and pardon me if I um, hurt anybody's sensibilities, <laughs> but I'm gonna tell you that the best way to know if you're drinking enough water is 
to check the color of your urine. So if you're peeing and <laughs> your water... Which we know you're all doing. Which, yeah, we know you're all doing, thanks. <laughs> so, and your urine is really dark, then you're not drinking enough water. So you need to drink more water. And if you are drinking too much water and your urine is perfectly clear, that might mean that you're drinking too much water. And there can be cases of people who actually do drink too much water, and that's a condition called hyponatremia. And basically, your electrolytes, um, the things that are involved in nerve impulses, kind of, sort of, are a little too dilute, and it can be problematic. So you want your urine to be a little bit lighter than the yellow color of a sticky note, is what I usually tell people. That's a good, that's and a good way to remember. Yeah, and I know Laura has some uh, really interesting thing that we were talking about before that, that happened today with water. Yeah, so today it was interesting that we were talking about it because a coworker of ours was in my office today and his phone made this odd noise and I was like, John, what was that? And he was like, oh, it was my app that reminds me to drink water throughout the day. So there are ways that, you know, everything has an app these days. So his app reminded him to drink water. I said, well, does it work for you? He's like, yep, going to drink water right now. So people do struggle with drinking water. Um, you're not alone if you struggle with drinking water, especially in the winter. I know we're coming up on the warmer months um, and drinking water tends to be second nature sometimes. But if you do struggle, um, my tip to you is one, you can try to find some flavorings to put in your water, maybe mint, cucumber, lemon, lime. Um, we forgot that one before. Yeah. Um, and, you know, fill up one of the water bottles, put some of that in it, fill up a few water bottles and make sure that you bring them all with you so that you know you have to go through that amount of water in a day. Try to give yourself a goal, you know, put it on your desk. And as you do one, you put it to the side, pick up the other one, and just throughout the day, try to keep that habit. Um, you can also try to get your water in in certain times of day. So if you wake up in the morning and you tend to drink water in the morning, maybe the, the next morning you drink two glasses instead of one. Um, or around your meals. So if you're having a meal and you have water with you, Try to focus on getting more water throughout that meal if you know you struggle with drinking water at other times of day. Um, also during your workouts. We're all drinking water. I know Lauren was drinking a lot of water in her workout. I think you all were too. It was pretty hard. Um, I know during my workouts, I drink a lot of water, so I try to focus on as much water as I can during my workouts and the times that I know I'm going to be thirsty. Right, and the best time like some people say they don't actually like water so finding things that will flavor it like you know Laura had said or even cutting up like strawberries or you know and putting them in the water will um, will help you get your water in and drinking when you're thirsty is really important so if you're thirsty go for the water um, if you have gastroparesis which means that your stomach doesn't empty as quickly um, as it used to empty. Um, you may want to separate your water from your meals, mm -hmm. but, um, but if you don't, water with your meals is a really great way to get and it in. And they do say, if you're thirsty, you're already slightly dehydrated. So try to kind of keep up with that. You don't want to get to the point of really, really thirsty. You also mentioned strawberries. Yeah. On that point, I think next up, yeah. we're going to be talking about fruit because yeah. the summer's coming up. We all like fruit. I know, you know, I love apples and peaches and all those things. So what's yeah. your, what, what about fruit? So an, an, our second topic in nutrition for Diabetes 101 is fruit. And fruit is really yummy, as we said. We, you know, most people really love fruit. Some people, we'll talk about vegetables later on, but some people say that, um, that they don't love all the types of vegetables, but they do love fruit. So fruit is yummy, but fruit does have carbohydrates in it. So if you are going to be eating fruit, you need to watch how many carbohydrates you are going to be eating. And one of the things that we say is that fruit's a great source of vitamins and minerals and phytonutrients, which are things that you can't get from other sources. So eat lots of different colors of fruit every day. Don't just have the same fruit every day, even if it's like strawberry season or blueberry season. Try to vary it up and try to limit your fruit to 
two or three times a day, depending on how your blood sugars run, and try to limit the amount of fruit that you have to about 15 to 20 grams of carbohydrates. Now, certain fruits might be higher than other fruits in, um, in sugar. So things like berries or green apples, like Laura yeah. mentioned, and melons tend to be lower in, um, in sugars and will cause your blood sugar to go up less. And things like oranges, pineapple, and grapes may tend to raise it more in people. Um, we had somebody writing in, which is great. Seltzer and flavored seltzers are really great ways to get. Um, thank you very much, um, Megan and Jeanette, for let you know for pointing that out. Um, and so seltzer is a great thing, and um, we are big on. <laughs> we drink a lot of seltzer here. We drink here. a lot of flavored seltzer here in the office. Try to get well. a bunch of people to transfer into seltzer if they're sick of water. I know some people can get bothered by the bubbles, um, but try to. Uh, space it out one a day. Um, it's a great thing too. It is right. a great option. And one of the last things I want to say before we move from uh, fruit into vegetables is that if you find that certain fruits, um, like you want to know how the fruit affects your blood sugar, you know, check your blood sugar like two hours after you eat the fruit and see. And then if your blood sugars are, are going too high, maybe try either changing to a different fruit or decreasing the amount of that fruit that you're trying. Now I have a question. What happens if you pair fruit with something else? Oh, pears are great fruit. <laughs> <laughs> they are. <laughs> Good one. So yeah, so pairing See a how fruit. See I did that? <laughs> Pairing fruits and pair the and fruit pears, yes. is good, but pairing <laughs> fruits <laughs> are a really great thing, and that also helps lower your blood sugar. So sometimes people have cheese, which is really great, and they'll have cheese and fruit, like maybe a half an apple and maybe some cheese. That's a great one. Like um, an apple and peanut butter or, or something like that. Great butter. snack for people to have. Right, or almond butter, or um, people are into other nut butters besides uh, um besides peanut butter. The other thing that you can do is have like half a banana, because bananas tend to be big in the United States. So we always <laughs> say either have the little banana or half a banana with some almond or nut butter, yeah. and that's a great idea. And that the protein and the fat will help your blood sugars from going too high. Yes, which is awesome. so that's an important thing to remember of fruits are carbs, and by themselves they might have more of an impact on your blood sugar than pairing them with something else, yeah. and, or eating pears, yeah. that too. <laughs> awesome. Now on to vegetables. So Laura, tell us a little bit about vegetables. Well, I love veggies. I don't know about you. I know a lot of people struggle eating vegetables and I try to gear people towards certain ways to get them in their diet. Um, they are also a source of carbohydrates, except they offer much less carbohydrates for a really, really high amount of nutrition. Mm. So they're very nutrient dense for a very low calorie food. Um, they provide a lot of vitamins and minerals. You want to pack your diet rich of fruits and veggies, but more so on the veggies. About half your plate should be covered in vegetables. Um, try for a lot of different colors. We're going for the, the rainbow here. Um, peppers, my favorite, roasted Brussels sprouts, roasted broccoli, different ways of trying vegetables. I roast a lot of my vegetables. I do a lot of... Uh, Riced cauliflower, which I don't know if anybody's tried, but I do a lot of that. You can even make a pizza crust with riced cauliflower. They're, it's delicious. Um, I put a lot of veggies mixed in with meats um, just to increase my vegetable consumption. And they have a very low impact on your blood sugar. So we want to pack our diet full of vegetables. I don't know if you guys struggle with eating vegetables. Lorian, what is your favorite vegetable? So, yeah, so I am like, I love most vegetables, actually, they point out in the office that I eat a lot of vegetables. I, they kind of call me a little rabbit. <laughs> Lorianne chumps on her yeah. celery yeah. and lettuce yep. and tomatoes. And, and radishes. Radishes. Yep, I like radishes. I love bok choy and Napa cabbage. Um, I like the greens. I like, I'll cook up like different, I'll stir fry up or vegetables, the green vegetables. Yep. I'll roast asparagus or broccoli or cauliflower. I love roasted carrots. I think those are really fun. And, um, and if, you, if, you're, if you have children and you're trying to get them to eat vegetables, mm -hmm. roasting um, 
carrots is a really good intro vegetables because they come they, they become like browned and sweet mm -hmm. and they're really yummy so that's if you're not a big vegetable eater and even if you're not a kid if you're just a kid at heart <laughs> then um, start with um, with carrots yeah so there are different types of vegetables so there are some more starchy types of vegetables like your potatoes sweet potatoes yams plantains um, some squashes um, and those do contain higher amount of carbohydrates. They do have less of an impact on your blood sugar most times because they are packed full of other nutritional components. Um, but you do also want to mix those things with a protein source or even a fat source or something that will balance all of that out. Um, we do hear a lot about carbohydrates in the diabetes space. We don't want to focus on it too much because I'm sure you hear a lot about carbohydrates, but we do want to give you the knowledge that there are different types. So, you know, there are simple carbs and there are complex carbs, and we really want to focus on the complex carbs that are packed full with nutrition and don't impact your blood sugar as much as the simple carbs like our pizza or bread or pasta or desserts or anything like that. Yeah. And Not that you can't have them. And, and one of the things that, you know, a lot of people, you know, talk to us about Diabetes is where your body do, is not dealing well with the amount of carbohydrates that you're currently eating. Right. So we're not here to tell you you need to go carb-free or, or low-carb, but we're just saying to bring your carbs down to a level that your body can manage. So, for instance, if you're used to having on your plate your protein, your you know, a small amount of vegetables and a lot of rice or a lot of pasta, right. um, then it's a really good idea for you to start thinking a little bit differently and get creative. Somebody um, in terms of getting creative with your veggies, like having sauteed veggies, having steamed veggies, and maybe using those lower carb vegetables um, as, you know, the primary space and then of your plate and then having the higher carb vegetables like your butternut squash or your egg corn squash mm -hmm. um, as your carbohydrate and maybe like you we were talking about this the other day when we were preparing for this and maybe instead of having pasta using like spaghetti squash I had it the other night I right. love it right. I use spaghetti squash I even throw other vegetables in it with chicken and some tomato sauce right on top and it's delicious it's filling and I know that I'm getting my nutrition in it. Right, so. and you're getting you're getting a little bit um, of your carbs mm -hmm. from what you're eating, but um, but you're also getting all these nutrients and the vitamins and minerals. Now, one question came in talking a little bit about lower carbs for people with type one diabetes. We are saying that if your carbohydrates, if what you're eating is causing your blood sugars to go up you may want to watch and lower your carbohydrates and always check your blood sugar and see how your body is responding to what you're eating. And that really will help you determine what is the best way to eat um, for your body. So people with type 1 might be wanting to bring their carbohydrates down lower so that their body requires less mm -hmm. insulin injections. Yep. And that works really well for a lot of people. Yep. So that's a really great idea. Yep. Um, we also had a question yes, from Nora good. who said, is it okay to eat avocado for breakfast? Sure is. Um, it's a great source of healthy fat. I would try to pair it with something, maybe protein. I know people like egg avocado on toast or mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. Um, avocado is a great thing. Just I would just caution you with how much avocado you're eating. Maybe, you know, a quarter of an avocado, great. But I would say... Yes, it's a very healthy food, and I love avocados. I love guacamole. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> and I, I think Laura's right, like when she says to watch how much you're eating. And really one of the best ways to do that is, you know, avocado is very dense. It's very rich and um, really great, full of vitamins and minerals and f really healthy fats. So as you're eating it, really pay attention to eat it, eating it and slow down and stop when you're starting to get full. Right. And then you can kind of start listening to your body um, a little bit more um, and, and really going with how hungry you're getting. Right. And I would say, you know, there's, like we said, there's no one size fits all, but the real thing becomes knowing what you're eating, really paying attention to how you feel. Um, I've worked with a lot of people who 
they say they feel good until they really feel good. Mm. And we've changed a lot of their eating habits. And I'm like, you know, just try it. Yeah. Maybe you, instead of two slices of bread, you have one. Exactly. And all those small changes are really what will carry you further. And people come in and they're like, you're right. Like, I feel so much better. And it's not even just weight wise. It's literally mental clarity and it's, it's productiveness at work and it's um, sleeping better and better relationships and all of these different things that you didn't know were affected by what you eat. Yeah. Um, it can really relate to other parts of your life. So um, that's, I really kind of challenge you guys in a way, a friendly way of saying, see what you're eating and maybe try to make some small changes there. Yeah. And, you know, hopefully, you know, some of these ideas you can like, even if you take away just one idea from mm -hmm. it, say you want to, you know, start having um, vegetables with your breakfast instead of just right. having the, the usual breakfast that you've been having, maybe, you know, go watch our video that we did about green juice and, um, uh, you know, and maybe trying to have some of that in the morning with your breakfast or instead of your breakfast right. and just kind of, you know, trying one thing out, one, you know, one takeaway from us yeah. tonight. We've had a lot of people who have really enjoyed the green juice and it's a great way to get a lot of your vitamins and minerals and still you can make it taste good, still make it taste good. Um, so I do challenge you or encourage you to try that. And I wanted to give some maybe suggestions in terms of like, we do get asked a lot, what do I eat for this mm -hmm. meal, this meal, this meal? So I know for breakfast for me, I'm a creature of habit. I like to eat the same thing every day. I do eat eggs most mornings. Um, I will make a smoothie sometimes, but eggs and some veggies or even some chicken sausage in it with a slice of bread or a piece of fruit or something kind of carries me along. Um, I don't know. What yeah, you know, other things besides, you know, the eggs, a lot of people really enjoy having yogurt yep. and most people in their mind think yogurt, sweet fruit, you know, that's all very well and good, but you can also have yogurt with vegetables. You can put in some nuts. Some yep. I put peanut seeds. butter in my yogurt. Oh, it's butter. delicious. Mm -hmm. Try Greek yogurt, swivel in some peanut butter. It's great. Yeah. So there's lots, you know, there's no one quote unquote, you know, best breakfast right. meal or best lunch meal, right. we're really trying to ask you to kind of think a little bit out of the box in terms of what you're used to eating mm -hmm. and kind of, you know, try experiment and, and have different things. If you have leftover vegetables from the night before that you sauteed up, maybe mix, you know, put that in with an yeah. egg or, yeah. you know, as Nora said, an avocado as well and, mm -hmm. and see how that breakfast works for you. Yeah, I'm big on, I meal prep a lot. I really think that it helps. Um, instead of getting caught in a situation where you're not sure what to eat mm -hmm. and you're kind of eating something that you wouldn't normally right. eat, I do meal prep a lot. Um, I find that it's very helpful. I was actually cooking at 6.30 this morning <laughs> because... I was too tired last night to do it, but I really do like know that I like to eat certain things and I like, I'm conscious of what I eat because it makes me feel good. So I want you all to be conscious of what you eat, um, to make yourselves feel good. And hopefully some of what we have told you can really encourage you to do that. And if you have questions, please, please send them our way. I know we get a lot of questions from people, so don't be shy. Um, we do our best to answer these. Lorianne and I are always kind of going back and forth with the the right way to guide people so we're not just saying one thing to everybody. Yeah. And so I think this is our last, um, last uh, topic in uh, Nutrition 101, and that's carbohydrates. So as we mentioned, you know, carbohydrates – are something that definitely goes straight to um, to sugar in the blood. I did miss protein, so I'm going to scooch back <laughs> to protein for a second. So before I go into carbohydrates, sorry guys, I did want to mention protein, and protein's been a little bit of controversy mm -hmm. lately. Um, and I know you've heard Charlie talk about it. We did this great whole diabetes talk about protein. If you're eating more protein than um, you know, if you're eating around 10 ounces or so, again, if you're a littler person, t it might be a little bit less than 10 ounces. If you're bigger, it might be a little bit more than 10 ounces, which is probably, uh, you know, if it's a piece of chicken, it's probably a little bit bigger than my hand, probably just like this what thickness. What about my hand? Yeah, it might be Laura's hand. This is about 10 <laughs> ounces, about the thickness of, you know, 
her <laughs> palm <laughs> there. And so if you're having about 10 ounces of protein at one sitting, that amount is going to convert into sugars. So that will raise your blood sugar. So you need to watch that um, you need and be aware that your blood sugar might go up even if you're quote unquote just having protein. And then the other thing is if you're having a big protein source um, at one time and you're also having carbohydrates and fat, not only will your blood sugars go up from excuse me, the carbohydrates and the protein, but they'll stay up a little bit longer. So you might test your blood sugar in three or four hours and your blood sugar is still gonna going to be elevated and, you, and it's going to you know, make you scratch your head and right. think. But if you go back and you recognize, oh yeah, I had a lot of protein, it had some, a, a bunch of fat in it, right. and I had carbohydrates, that's what's going to pull I it I know, out. it's common. I know Charlie's talked about it with red meat with him yep. a yep. lot. Yep. And it carries over through the night, you know, the steak, and he's 300 before he knows it. Right, exactly. So. Okay, so now we're back to carbs. Go ahead, Laura. Well, we did a bit of carbs. Yeah, we did a bit of um, carbs. Yeah, I mean, I think we all know carbs. Um, they, it's really what you guys hear about all the time, and we're here to kind of just guide you in the right direction of which carbs to eat. Um, they are a great source of energy, primary fuel for our brain. If you guys are familiar with the um, parking lot analogy, our brain is where our glucose goes first, so we want to keep that stored, but um, we want to store it and fuel it with the right carbohydrates. So carbs are anything from, you know, whole grains of brown rice, um, oatmeal, whole wheat, kasha, quinoa, wild rice. Um, then there's the breads, donuts, pretzels, vegetables, fruits. Um, even milk and yogurt, so these sources of dairy do have carbohydrates in them. They're most often a fat, a carb source. Um, asterisk there, they also contain dairy, and it could be um, an allergen or an intolerance for many people. If you do feel bloating or anything after that, you could relate it to that as well. Um, and then there are the processed foods, candies, cookies, cakes, sodas, so any soft drinks, potato chips, and... Um, some fruit juices that have added sugars in them. Yeah. So just be cautious of those. Those will cause your blood sugar to rise. Um, and like I think we've talked about, the most, one of the most important things is testing your blood sugar to about two hours after certain meals to see how what you ate affected your blood sugar and then kind of dialing it back. And even if you want to journal that day or if you're a few days and log your blood sugars, you can make correlations between meals and numbers and see any patterns that arise. And feel free to always reach out to us, send us your log or whatever you want, and we can help you with those things because we love to see those correlations and to help people noticing patterns in their day-to-day. -day. Yeah. So this is awesome. Um, we wanted to just add in, in terms of cha if you make any changes in your carbohydrates, to do it gradually. Don't mm -hmm. make quick changes, especially if you are on medications that can be hypoglycemic in nature that would cause your blood sugars to go down. So if you are going to make mm -hmm. a, a change, please just talk to your doctor or your diabetes educator or other health care provider and just let them know that this is what you're going to do and tell them, remind them what medication you're on and make sure that it doesn't impact that. So we wanted to with see, that. you know, <laughs> any other questions? We want to bring Lauren in with us <laughs> because we are the three L's. And um, we want to thank you for joining us in the glucose zone. And tonight's broadcast were brought to you by the three L's <laughs> of Lauren, Laura, and Lorianne. So we will see you back here soon. And thank you all for joining us.